This is One on One with Jasper Cole, Hollywood's bad guy, and so much more. Actor, talent manager, producer, and more. Now he's sitting down with today's top newsmakers from entertainment, politics, pop culture, and beyond. This is One on One with Jasper Cole. Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome, everyone, to One on One with Jasper Cole. This is your host, Mr. Jasper Cole, and we are live in Hollyweird, California, right here at Temple Bay Studios. And please go to social media and follow us. We are at uh, Jasper Cole Says, S A Y S, on Twitter and Instagram. And you can go to my Facebook page. And you can also go to the website, jaspercole.com. And there's a link to one on one with Jasper Cole. We're so happy to be back. Uh, we're always happy to have you out there in uh, listening world, tuning in. We may be in your car, you may be on a plane. That's what's amazing today about all these apps and everything. But I'm really, really excited about our guest today. I think you're going to be also, you guys know how much I preach about hyphenates and people not in the industry, not just doing one thing or two things. Well, our guest today does about 700. (laughs) He's a director, he's a writer, he's a producer, he's an actor, he's a husband, he's a father. He's Mr. Harley Whalen. Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you, Jasper? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome back. I'm excited. I mean, even just sitting and talking to you outside, I'm excited about this. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. And I want to say congrats on your new new film, Eternal Code. Thank you. And you had the big premiere this past Wednesday and at the world-famous Grauman's Chinese Theater. Yeah, it was it was magical, and it's... Uh, you said it was Cinderella-like. It's like for a guy, yeah. I mean, we... Minus we, the slippers. Right. Thank or, God for or, that. Or, or slippers. Or, no sl- judgment. Yeah, I mean, afterwards. <laughs> right. The after party, no. Right, that's no, but it was amazing. I mean, uh, my, my manager, uh, Joe Williamson, put together an incredible amazing. event, and it kind of had me... Uh, I, I don't want to say my breath was taken away, but but almost it was, you know, you see Hollywood royalty at, at your premiere, and you and I'm very big on having no sense of arrival because right. I think that's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. So I, I, I try to do my thing and say yay, and then move on right, really quickly. Right. Uh, tuck yeah, you, those you don't awards like under whole, any pretentiousness of no. showbiz we were talking about yeah. earlier. We're both like that. Yeah, I mean, the, it's about should, the work. We're so blessed to even be doing this Hello. in any capacity, right? At, at all, and that anyone at all is interested in watching and listening, <laughs> it, it's like. Thank you, because I'm just a regular guy. Well, I want to talk about your uh, humble beginnings, shall we say, because I I told Harley outside that he's definitely our first Swedish-born guest. So you were born and raised, reared, or in in Sweden. Yeah. And uh, what was that like? Because, you know, I, I think... My listeners know that America has a love affair with Sweden on yeah. many levels, the beautiful women, the great culture, the, the, the winters and the skiing, and then also politically. And, you know, yeah. we, we all talk about how your country takes care of the, you pay a little higher taxes mm-hmm. to take care of people and not have them living on the streets. It's so. a really interesting formula in Sweden because it is a capitalistic society. Mm-hmm. Everybody talks about socialism, right. but we actually have fairly low business taxes, but there are no loopholes. So you can't hide That's and you can't dive under these things. Everybody pays. And in Sweden, if we have something that feels wrong, we seem to all rally around it and say, you know what, well, I'll, I'll is, take some of mine. Right. Take some of mine to help them. Right. And that's the mentality. And I, it's I not do the love have that. and the have nots like we no, have here. No, the, the, the net to catch people is, is really strong. And I, I like that because I think we have to remember that we've all needed grace and help yeah. and something at some point. Uh, so to have that is, is fantastic. Now, has, has it, have you seen it be that way forever? And it's really it kind yeah. of held steady. Yeah. I mean, that's we. I think what happened to Sweden is coming from our not humble beginnings of crazy Vikings right, who right. conquered and and and, and were not cool people until our last very reluctant war to get out of the Hansa Pact, which I believe was the first European <laughs> Union. <laughs> Probably, yeah, uh, I mean, it really, really was. But that was our last war, and ever since, it's been this thing of kindness. Uh, and 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 compassion for for humanity, and right. I love that. Yeah. Well, again, first a Swedish guest here, yeah, but I, thank you. We want to talk about the fact that you grew up there and you became really involved in martial arts, mm-hmm. and that was a real passion of yours. Judo, 
I know I think you're a black belt yeah. in karate now, right? You said you got into MMA fighting. and yeah. So tell us a little bit about that world and how, how that shaped you. Yeah, I started, uh, my, my mom and dad tried to put me in all kinds of sports. And, right. and uh, it was really hard for me to get into team sports because if I was great uh, and a crappy teammate could make it all terrible <laughs> and if i was crappy i could win could with great teammates trophy. yeah so i just i didn't i never i like the sports but i just didn't like how to, how right. it evaluates uh so I, I started doing judo and i was like i'm here on my own merit and uh and I was kind of terrible to start, actually, uh, and I, I grew into it somehow. Up. Yes, ex- I think that, I th- and I think that helped also. So when I started winning, I never took it for granted. Right, uh, you had I, I spent hard. five years not winning a single tournament when I first started. Not even the small club tournaments. Wow. I was the guy who got thrown around, and I grew into myself. And uh, at, at twelve and a half years old, uh, I, I started winning and. By 14, I'd won huge European wow. tournaments, and I was competing against full-grown men. Wow. So it was really, really odd. Well, and that requires such a discipline, also, the martial arts. And it's all about a lot of it's mental mm-hmm. as well. I mean, all this Most really, it. It, 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 it's interesting how it does sort of parlay into your latter years of being an actor and yeah. the show business and the tenacity and, like you said, having to... You're sort of competing with yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell actors a lot of times we think we're p- competing with all these other actors, no. but really there's only one of you and one of me, and yep. that's who shows up that day and that kind of thing. So it's yeah. interesting. I find that with um, a lot of actors, male and female, mm-hmm. that, that ones that come from athletics, they have a whole different take on it, and it's they're really successful usually too because they they approach it like an athletic. You okay. should have John Savage on your show. You <sighs> sounded just like him when you said that. Really? He kept talking to me and he kept saying, I think the reason you're so good with this is because of your athletic background and, and you just you just know what it takes to do Well, you things. know about hard work. Yes. Not always getting a trophy in the beginning. You know what I mean? And, and, and working towards it. Like yeah. putting in the time yeah. and, and, and the effort. And, and, and the humbleness of knowing that once upon a time, I was really good winning all kinds of things, and I had a uh, we had a national team tournament against France, and this is a guy I probably beat eight times that year, and this is in my hometown, and I think I kind of thought I was thinking like, about what uh, highlight reel I was going like to win. I got this in the bag. Yeah, and I what he did when I was full of myself was study. And pay attention. And he's been working really hard. I go in to do my favorite throw that I've dumped him on eight times in a row. And he steps out of the way and Bam. cartwheels me and fights over in probably like oh. 16 seconds. Oh, and I was like, oh, my Bam. God. Wake that, up call. But it was great. Right. Loved right. it. Right. Not not right then not and there. Then, but you realize later. Yes. It kind of shifted. Yeah. Literally. And, it, and, but it, it, was and, a and it's a humbling experience. Right. Which I think are most of them are, are very good for us. Yeah. And that's true in life in general. Mm-hmm. But again, back to because of what we do in this business, you yeah. know, there's the ebbs and the flows mm-hmm. and, and, you know, this. Um, I've mentioned to you a lot of people know I'm a manager also yeah. and I, I try to get actors to get away from this thing about when I make it if I hear that one more time and I was guilty I mean yeah. when, in my, when I started at 23 and I, I regret so much if I look back now the one thing I really regret mm-hmm. the most is not enjoying the journey along the way the moments when I was I was making it yeah. in the journey there's really no it because no. It, it, death would be it because yes. it, you know, it's like anything in life. That you is have to the keep eventual. growing and, and getting better. But yeah. there's a real pervasive thing that happens in the show business about, well, he's already made it. But we all know people who thought, well, I guess this was a making it. And then yeah, you got to decide what you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, f- absolutely. I think if you focus on arriving, you're going to miss out on a journey that's amazing. Yes. And and I think, you know... It, if if you th- if you think about this, like I said when we first started, the fact that there are people listening to us talk about doing the things that we love so much, uh, that's all crazy great already. We have, right. we have we, arrived. It's icing already. on the cake. Uh, but the the thing is, st- stop worrying about that part and right. just enjoy doing this yeah, enjoy the craft and uh, uh i'm i have a role in a film in michigan when i'm heading back and and uh, they're bringing me in i'm starring across christy swanson and oh wow and, Buffy. Uh, 
Yeah, and 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 talk about some martial arts, right? Kick ass. So, so they were like, hey, just we've been working really hard on getting this budget together. So I'm hoping you're not going to break our back for your scene. And I'm like, no, like, you know what? You're so happy. I'm a SAG minimum guy. Like, I'm And grateful fine. to be working, yeah. period. But also with Christy and, yeah. Yeah, and, and the, at least this is a small Michigan-based company that's trying to make a film that's going to go somewhere. Anything I can do to support that right. is great. Right. Well, see, that's your Swedish background coming in. That's your humble, probably Swedish. We take care of everybody, kind of. I know, seriously. Yeah. I think it it really helps. Um, so, yeah. so I'm trying. Yeah, it's, it was an it was an interesting transition. But what took you? What got you from Sweden to America? Was it the athletics? Is that what brought you here? It was actually the acting. The uh, acting. I had. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do, but I, I loved the entertainment side. So I was singing, I was rapping, and and what's oh, terrible rap, for me rapping. is my my mom was a great singer. My sister is ungodly talented. Uh, so I I never felt that I was good enough at either of those two things. Right. Well, uh, I released a couple great. of songs. Uh, one song went all the way to the Cannes uh, music market. Wow. And, and so obviously uh, you can sing. I don't know about well, that. I, I think uh, I think anyone can sing. Oh no, tone no. deaf, <laughs> completely tone deaf. Okay, well I, I had don't a director know. try to put me in the musical The Fantastics oh. when I was twenty because he said I. I looked the part and I could play mm. it and blah, blah, blah. And you, don't worry, Jasper, you can talk, sing it. And I started rehearsals and it was just the most horrifying thing. And oh, after the second wow. day, we went to lunch with the cast, went to lunch. And these were all seasoned singers. Mm. And I said, um, so guys, um, how bad am I? And they were like, oh, you, you know you're bad? And I was like, yeah. And they go, well, we were talking about it yesterday, and you're you're probably the worst we've ever seen. <laughs> oh, my God. And I, th- I said, thank you so much. I knew that. Yeah. And I will be bowing out now. Yeah. You know, thank you. But anyway, so I don't know about, I don't know. I think singing is a great talent. You either have I it think or you so. don't. I think so, too. But I think there are some people... They just have an interesting sound, and you just enjoy listening to them. And it doesn't have to and be they're not pitch the greatest. perfect. I mean, you think back at some of the legends uh, that, that talked their way through half of the songs, and Tony they Bennett. just had swagger, and yeah. the swagger makes you like it, That's even true. though it may not even be that great in truth. Right. So, uh, so I think that's probably it. But I, but anyway. So I, 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 I was a break dancer. I got on a a, a TV show, and uh, we were we were supposed to be the essentially the people that entertained while they switched sets. You were and, like the Fly Girls of In Living Color. Yes. I don't know if you even remember. Yes. J Lo was the uh, an original <laughs> you know, Fly yeah, Girl. They, yes. They were sort of the Ex- in, going into the commercial break. Exactly. Yeah. It. Yeah. So. Uh, Instead of bringing in actors for the small roles to transition you, they would come over and say, hey, so do you want to come up and buy the suntan lotion? You're already there. And I'm like, yeah. And then you start hanging out with actors and you start seeing their process. And it's so cool. It's so fascinating to see the transition of going from me to them. Right. Uh, and when I started experiencing that, I just had to have more. Got an acting coach starting into the getting into the Stanislavski and the Stella. Now, were, you, the, were, were you speaking English? Swedish. Swe- yeah. 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 Where did the English come? Were you studying English or um, don't tell me you didn't know you picked it up here. I, no. I'm always astounded when people tell me that because no, I can Sweden, barely speak English. Sweden uh, is pretty good with the educational okay. system. So you start studying English in either first or second grade. Okay. And um, uh, I actually never got my A plus, even though it was my best subject because I refused to speak English. Right. I was like, no, no, no I You're watch like, all the I'm movies. Swedish. I'm like... I speak American English because I think it's cooler. And That's so funny. It's really funny, but now I wish I could do that British accent. I've had a couple of auditions where they were like, could you do that? And I'm like, no, I, I, I wish I either. could. I think it's right. But it's interesting. when you Going back to the tra- like when you started acting training, mm. d- is, is there more of a, an English um, uh, feel to the training there in terms of like, you know, they, you mentioned Stanislavski. And, yeah, I mean, they do like the Hamlet type right, of Shakespearean, experience. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I found, I, I really fell in love uh, with, with Sanford Meissner. Yeah. He was the guy that just like shifted everything for me because I learned so much about, you know, emotional recall and these type of things. And he said, ah. he's like, just 
imaginary circumstances. Right. Play with it as if it's real. Right. Go back to your childhood state of listening and responding. And I'm like, whoa, I think, love I it. Think listening is the key. You know, that is. I, and as you heard it the first time. Some of the best time, moments yes. in a scene is when you're not, when you're listening mm-hmm. to your partner and you're not just waiting on your line. Yes. You know, and, and, and you and, can tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the big stars. Oh, I mean, yeah. it doesn't matter. But yeah, so yeah. that's fascinating. So mm. you that's when you sort of got the bug. Yeah. And and started studying and mm-hmm. and then was it was it a thought of um I don't know. We just had like a was that an earthquake? I don't um know. was it the, did you think of like LA or New York or did you when you were thinking of coming to America was there ever like a a deciding factor. I had been to New York, and I actually thought that's where I was heading. Okay. Yeah. And at the time, I'd done limited amount of TV and film, and I'd done some high school and college plays, and I loved that instant gratification. Like I mean, it's it's a buzz, uh, and and you're like two feet taller walking out of there somehow. And you sustain a performance, you yeah. Know, for. On. And I and the and the uh, we talked about dedication earlier. You learn the whole script. You learn the whole script. That's a great habit. Anybody who's an acting uh, out there doing acting, get into theater. It'll teach you a lot of great habits. Well, I actually because I started in theater, I just thought that was that was the natural progression. It wasn't until you know it wasn't until years later mm-hmm. I was working with actors who would tell me they had never done theater, and I was like, wow. I, mm-hmm. I don't understand. But then when I started doing TV and film, I saw what a craft that was, what, what mm-hmm. a completely different beast that was. Yeah. You know, I mean, true act, real genuine moments are real, whether you're on stage, or, but you know what I mean? Yeah. The technique of it is so different. But um, so I had a, a different appreciation then for people who had only done TV and film. But yeah. now kids today, I'm going to sound like the old get off my lawn guy, but you know, <laughs> today, um, it's all the internet and yeah, social media. It's all it, film. It's very hard when I tell young actors about doing theater. They don't yeah. always tend to And there's this toward. misconception of less is more, which right. is, a, I, I don't like that at all because it that's only true maybe on pitching your voice to your partner, right. scene partner versus right. the audience and stuff like that. But if you look at some of the greatest actors of our time, they're not small. No. But they're connected. Right. So if you're connected and true and you've decided fully on who you are, right. you don't have to be small. Right. But you have to be true. And you have to be in the moment. Yes. And not, Listen as if it was the first time every time. Right. It's, it's, and so that's what, we're, that's what I talk about. People will say to me, Jasper, after 30 years or whatever, do you still, you still love at all and I go I do I love everything but mm-hmm. I, what I really love is between action and cut <sighs> you know and you if you and we're two actors so we can talk yeah. actually you really can't describe that really because it's I don't know how to describe it so it's like it's just a moment yeah. that happens I'm getting to the point now with age where it's all the other stuff before action and mm-hmm. after cut is annoying at times. Yeah. You know, can be, like, I was sure. the guy that like, I would be, I couldn't wait to get, I'd be at the set early and mm. I'd stay late and, you know, and mm-hmm. then of course, as you get older, it beca- it's a job mm-hmm. like any job. But I always say if the time comes when I'm not enjoying the, between the action and the cut, oh. that's when I need to hang it up because yeah. there's nothing worse than like a really angry bitter yeah guy or a woman on a set like yeah. well why are you doing this let yeah, somebody no who's yeah. excited to do it yeah yeah i love that i know exactly what you're talking about you're 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 coming out i've i've heard this so many times someone says cut and you're like oh shoot we're doing a movie <laughs> wow yeah that was great <laughs> I and love there's that. There's adrenaline, like an athletic yeah. thing, but there's adrenaline, and then and you lose yourself in the moment, and you're and you have to be reminded that you're not really that guy. Right. You just lived as him for a short period of time, and you were fully engaging with somebody else right. that was doing the same thing. And it's that's I mean it's beautiful. I agree with you. It's 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 magic. It's magic. It yes. Yeah. And so, did you always you you thought of directing producing doing no. it all i mean was that always no. your thing acting no. was your thing yeah, acting was that was thing. my thing too yeah but like you i also started producing and you know realizing i always tell actors 
if we could only just act, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. But we need to be real well rounded and you mm-hmm. have a business sense obviously because yeah. let, let, let's also say your new you, with your new film Eternal Code your your yeah. wonderful wife Katie. Thank you. is a part of that. Yeah. Huge part and it's your company. Yep. Um, tell everyone the name of your company. It's called Painted Creek Productions. It's named after the trail that I ride my bike on every day. In Michigan. Yeah. So Harley lives in Michigan. Yeah. Um, not in Detroit, but adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you you have this amazing film company that's allowing you and, and uh, Katie and uh, you've put together like a ensemble Great of people team. that you work yeah. with. And we discussed earlier. Well, let me jump and say, where yeah. can everyone follow you on social media or follow the company? So it's a bit, of, a bit of a cluster with me because I was a professional fighter once upon a time. And my Twitter is still Harley the Swede, which was my fighter name. So that one is, is Harley the Swede. S-W-E-D-E? Yep. And then on uh, Facebook, I'm Harley Wallen, uh, regular uh, Harley Wallen. And then on Instagram, it's official Harley Wallen for some reason. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, Painted Creek Productions has a, a, a page on Facebook as well. And I actually start the first casting call we put out is put out through there. Oh, wow. Uh, and then we go to, you know, Actors Access. And we did IMDb, but IMDb casting calls, you get so many. I would think so. Oh. Oh my goodness and my, my wife is actually my my casting coordinator slash director uh, so she gets us from 800 uh, submissions down to the 25 that I watch wow because um, uh, she has a really good eye for talent right. and, and truth and screen presence and understands how all that works right uh, because I'll go I go crazy watching that much and, oh, I'm and, sure. and there's so many people that are natural talents uh, uh, that I just wish that they would take off one networking event a week and go to a class. No, and I don't you, mean that in a bad no, no, no. way. We're, I'm just saying uh, there's something th- to be said for if training. You, if you said you're going to be playing in the NBA and I suggested to get a strength and conditioning coach and a basketball coach, or, yeah, or you'd know say that makes sense. You wouldn't say, well, I'm a natural because that, that's not how it works. I have to tell <laughs> Harley was using that expression. I haven't actually heard people say that, yeah. which is sad and funny at the same time. That's going to be my new hashtag natural. I'm a natural. <laughs> I mean, I just, it's, it's just so baffling funny. to me. Because so are people doing self, are you watching self tape? Self tape a lot. Uh, we do in-person auditions as well. I love them because every now and then you just misjudged who you are. Right. And if it's a, a, a video taping then i i can't direct that so yeah. you just get a no uh, i know uh, that's and, the whole uh, there's yeah. a big thing about taping self-taping auditions now yes and no and yay and all mm-hmm. that but you don't you don't get that adjustment in the room no and, and that energy in the yeah. room that you can pick up on a person that you may not get yeah on camera wow so so how many films have you guys produced up to date now so we've done uh four short films we actually did our uh we took a long hiatus from short films because they're not necessarily financially right. viable but there's so much that needs to be said and the feature is not the right place for it so we did a, a short that we're working on uh, right now in post actually okay uh so four short films and we just wrapped our 10th feature film wow. in Ash and Bone and, and the crazy thing is this is in a little over four years that's amazing well that's what I'm going to say it's been very short period of yeah. time what was the impetus like what what I mean besides wanting to mm-hmm. take control obviously and do your own stuff was there one particular you did the first script come to you and you said I, I want to make this or how did this all happen for those no, people listening actually the Michigan used to have incredible film incentives and I just started getting some nice roles uh, and then they cut them out of nowhere and said hey you know, we they went to Georgia yes they did and I mean, and we were we were at the time equals that's right with with georgia and we had batman versus superman we had a lot of big big projects come through town and uh our new senator just said nah we're gonna give it to blue chips and it's not like the state couldn't have used the money 
<laughs> I mean, you know, seriously. Oh, yeah. yeah it yeah. makes absolutely no sense. Right. I mean, it really doesn't. Uh, so I was sitting on an indie set when when we heard that they were actually going to scrap them. And, and I looked at my scene partner, and you, you, we've been in so many movies that didn't get finished. Right. And, and uh, didn't get you didn't get your footage. Or... They didn't go anywhere. Uh, people didn't do their homework. Uh, and I just looked at Walbert, my scene partner, and I said, I, we got to put our name in the hat. I'm like, we're actors but we've been paying attention on set so we kind of know what we're doing we can do a better job i thought i was a natural (laughs) (laughs) and i did a couple short films and i realized i am not a natural I have to go to school. Oh my god! So I went online. I went on. Uh, I'm going to plug something here. Yeah, but, but Rocketjump.com is phenomenal. Rocket Jump. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, online film school, and oh, wow. uh, it's great. Uh, Never you heard Take of it, it at your own time and at your own pace. And what I like as a director is I have taken enough classes on uh, gaffing and uh, and cinematography and blocking and 180s wow. and how to shoot a Mexican standoff. I love it. Uh, but I mean, even, so when you were just acting, though, mm-hmm. you must have had an affin- you, you you like the whole behind the scenes directing yes. side, right? Yes. You just I was fascinated by yeah. it more than anything. Yeah. Because, you know, this is the cliche that all actors want to direct. Mm-hmm. I actually cannot and do not. Like, I bow down to directing because, you know, if people don't know, you're the first one there and the last one oh. to leave. I mean, it's oh, really, yeah. it's a it's year, a it's two years. It's a real, but it's but when it comes to film, it's your baby. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's probably no greater satisfaction it's either a, way. It's amazing in seeing something through and and... And what I think people sometimes don't get that I, I see some mean comments posted on on indie films and on films in general. I saw somebody uh, when we first get crushed by some of the haters when the first film came out. I was like, oh, you know, Devastated. you just. You just wrote with permanent marker child. on my baby. Right. Like, what? What is this? And and I clicked on them, and most of them didn't lead to anywhere. So they were like, "No, no, no you don't understand. People that you didn't cast are pissed." Right. And then they're like, "Other filmmakers in your town see you as competition." Uh, and I was like, "Really? Like, I don't." And the get other this. people are in their basement at the moment. Yes, so. there's a lot of that. Yeah. And, but the 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 thing is, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but but anyway, so so it takes you almost two years to see a film uh, from concept to 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 a premiere right right uh, so so when you're looking at a year and a half to two years of, of your life when your film comes out it's an amazing feeling and and to sit in an audience and see will they react to all the things the way kind and, of and like the different what i was trying things to they react to that yeah. you maybe didn't even anticipate see. Yeah. yeah and you know let's be honest in today's market to get anything made is amazing mm-hmm. to get it distributed to get it in a theater i mean it's almost yeah. like film now is getting a big wide release is not mm-hmm. even the pro- the whole idea now is to get to the streaming and the vod and mm-hmm. all the platforms which is great because it opens up i i guess right there's so many more I platforms think this, I think this to, is all a double-edged sword right i think that there's yeah, so much that. that we can drown in mm-hmm. content and uh, i think a fair amount of people uh are getting their product out because of a name, right. and you watch the film, and you're like, "What? What was that?" It's, it's quality, not quant. I mean, quantity, not quality. Yeah, and and you have no idea. The posters look just as good for the crappy movie right. as it does for the good movie. That's true. Uh, and, and and sometimes you have name talent that you would assume is fantastic, and and you get the shock to be like, "No, that didn't quite do well, it." If it's if they say if it ain't on the page, mm-hmm. it's not on the stage. So yeah. if, if the script sucks, and yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes you can take a bad script and get great actors and a great yeah, editor. Yeah, I can and save what, it. But in general, yeah, it's got to all kind of gel. Yeah, together. It, I, I would absolutely agree with that. And and uh, uh, I, I love Quentin Tarantino in parts and and some stuff. I go, you're crazy. Yeah, uh, but he says ninety percent of directing is casting. Casting and that I do agree with. Right, you get you get a round peg in a round hole that will work. Right, uh, uh, you start trying to force a round peg down a square hole. It's going to be a long well, also, filming. who has time? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. When you're shooting on budgets and time, you you can't spend 45 minutes talking to an actor no. about a scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, how, how many takes are we going to do on this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Uh, 
I, I'm I'm a, I'm you pretty. Can do pre I do I do the uh, two or three table reads. Yeah. I, uh, I I meet with actors separate, yeah. and and then we we do a couple rehearsals. Which people are like? Do you do rehearsals? I I'm like, that. yeah, I do. I want to make it. I want to get it right. And yeah. then we do the blocking rehearsals on on set right. before we go. And and I always go over there before the camera is set. And I'm like, let me hear you guys. You yeah. know, yeah, and um, and I found also as a as a director, is most of the time a good actor will know when they did something off, mm -hmm. and as a director, the worst thing you can do is get in their head, right? And then you make them self conscious and you flare up right, that right, third eye, right, and right. and then you're gonna have a a long hard day, right? So sometimes just get out of the way right. is a good thing too as a director. And do you find are you a director that storyboards? everything out or you know i mean there's two schools of thought cause shot list guy. shot list yeah because yeah. i think when I, I my first my second feature i i co-directed with a good friend of mine good director jerry hayes and he likes the storyboard and 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 nothing wrong with storyboard but for me it locks me in too tight that's what i was thinking i don't see what could be right which i i love finding what could be and 90% of the time I'll do exactly what I was planning on doing but you leave it open for yeah. that that's the actor though in you yeah I think so that's allowing for that magic that can happen you're not locking in right? yes I, and, and also, I love that and, and isn't it also important that you connect with your DP I mean mm -hmm. Are, do are you also DP, do we need to put DP on the list no, no but no. I but I but I can tell you the difference I did eternal code with a guy who is and everybody said I was crazy this guy has done music videos never made a feature film and they said what are you doing and I said no I met with uh, with Jackson a bunch of times it's not always going to be easy but right. he's the guy for the job wow and and everybody thought I was crazy my partners were a little <coughs> uh, nervous a little hesitant and and uh, I, I I don't think that the movie would have been as good uh, with somebody else uh, on the camera. I wanted a very different camera for this film because I wanted that camera to almost be a participant. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a a lot of Steadicam. He's a very talented Steadicam guy. Right. Uh, so I wanted that camera to be involved, almost like a character. Like another character. Yeah. So let's talk about Eternal Clout. Yeah. Tell everyone the story, the the what it's about, and okay. so what I, to expect. Yeah, I, uh, I read a... A story on on Facebook actually a couple of years ago, and it's this uh, Italian doctor who was going to take a paraplegic person's head off and reattach it to a brain dead person and switch the good head to the good body. And I thought that's crazy. And then I read that they've already done it on deceased primates and seen um, it's sort of like taking the face transplant to the whole other. Yeah. Level. Yeah. With a complete head. Yeah. And they really think that they will get it all to grow back. They would do a medically induced coma, almost like a, a hibernation for, for an animal, yeah. where they drop all your systems down until everything heals back and then re kind of activate you. Uh, and I thought it was crazy. Well, the whole thing with stem cell now. And oh, all that, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was fascinated, but 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 it came to me is because I. I We've seen so many stories about the Holy Grail back in the day, and and it's such a fascinating subject. So I started thinking about how far are we from being able to download our essence of us and mm. get plugged into a new body. Wow. So that's the concept. In the film, two uh, genetic research companies have figured it out, and they have made a prototype and... One of the companies realizes the other company is not playing fair. They have a waiting list with the richest of the rich. They're ordering their supermodel bodies, and they are not brain dead. They're walking around right now, right. and they're just planning on taking them. So, uh, you know, it's like or, uh, right. uh, organ harvesting almost, right, right, you know. Right, right. Uh, and uh, I, I just was fascinated by, and we have by that whole concept. This. We hadn't seen this. No, yet. it's a bit of an original yeah. idea. Uh, which I, I, I think I have those. I, 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 I think my crazy writer mind runs places with things. Uh, so yeah, it's a fun ride. That's for sure. Yeah. Would you? And we would. Would you call this a thriller? Yeah. Yeah. An action yeah. thriller. A action thriller. Is what everybody said uh, yesterday. They said action thriller with a touch of sci-fi. Sci is what they were saying. Yeah. It's kind of got a mixture. Yeah. Of all that. 
Tell everyone who's in the film. You have some amazing actors. Uh, Scout Taylor Compton uh, uh, was she's so amazing. She's such a physical presence. And I remember when I said, so your character is slowly going insane. Mm. She can't stand people. And she gets put in a position where she has to deal with people. And under the pressure, she just explodes internally and takes it out on everything and everyone. So she was amazing. I had no idea how athletic she is and how, how, uh, I mean, she's, she's awesome. Uh, 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 Billy Worth uh, and Richard Tyson and, and if you don't know Richard Tyson is such an amazing villain and he's always like can I play a good guy Harley I've had uh, Richard in a couple I of I feel that way because <laughs> I play bad guys it's like you know yeah. it's nice sometimes to play a, a good guy yeah Oh, I totally agree. It's it's funny, but but Richard is such a, an amazing villain. Uh, if you remember Kindergarten Cop, he's the oh yeah awful dad with the <laughs> long hair. Uh, but he's he's a, a great actor. He finds moments, places that you probably didn't you know. didn't even know, and you're like, wow, wow, like how do you That's do exciting. that? Uh, Billy, I I cast Billy. I, Billy was in Betrayed as well. Yeah, you and, had Richard and, and and Billy both. And Betrayed is an, was your film from a year ago, which yeah. is about human trafficking, which was a brilliant Thank story you. and got a lot of great reviews and great attention. Yeah, and um, you sort of tough subject. Tough subject. It's really hard again, to shoot some of the scenes, knowing. Uh, we, I, I think I interviewed and talk to people affected a little too much right. it became almost a passion project well you're a father also yeah so that makes it tough yeah about all that with the kids being mm-hmm. abducted and yeah but again you that's a, you you tend to you, you want to do subjects that that touch you and yeah you, your movies tend to always have a moralistic ethical kind of st- love moral dilemmas yeah because i think all of us would like to think it's uh, a, a guy came to me with a script that's probably like right when I first started uh, making films and he's like it's about this thing and that happens and a few people in town get superpowers and they all think they're going to be superheroes but we're all so selfish they actually become villains and and the crazy thing with this story and, and I, I you can steal the concept if you want to but Go ahead. what yeah. happens is is these people only very temporarily get superpowers oh so you then have to live with the consequences <laughs> oh. when you don't have these powers right. of all these things that happened. A uh, very unique little uh, peek into a story. And, and he wanted it done almost like a Sin City-esque style. Right. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to make this, but it's way, way over me way right too. now. I was just yeah. getting started. Yeah. But phenomenal idea. But it's but that's, I think... Uh, so do, are you, do you find that you're looking for ideas just kind of come to you you don't you, you, they hit you out of the blue like you like you said you're reading an article about yeah. something and yeah yeah uh, it happens a lot uh, and uh you katie uh, sort of like yeah we, we've actually written a forth. script together and we've uh we, yeah, we do a lot of things together but the i was going to say if you want to find the craziest inspiration <laughs> for writing a script uh i made a film called uh enigma that's going to be released November 1st. Oh, wow. And uh, when we had our auditions, there was a guy who ended up playing the detective that auditioned for the role of the demonic possessed person. And it was not right for the role, but Mm. it was an amazing audition. So his audition for Enigma, I wrote a film based on him getting one of the main roles in the film, which is the serial killers who gets his first taste in a film called Abstruse that is actually also releasing on November 1st <laughs> wow. now. Same distributor. But uh, but but I wrote the whole film based on his audition. Oh, my God. And the crazy thing is he didn't get the role he auditioned for. <laughs> so How you wild never, is that? That's my point. You just never know no, where you're... No, something's going to hit you. So how many how many films do you have upcoming? Oh, God. So this year, we are just released Eternal Code. November 1st, we're releasing Enigma and Abstruse. Abstruse stars uh, Tom Sizemore and uh, Dennis Haskins. Oh, from and, uh, Dennis by Haskins the Bell. in a way that you've never seen him. You probably won't like him after the oh, movie. Oh, that's okay. But he's great. Yeah. He actually plays a really good villain. Good for him. Um, and Go then, against type. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And Sizemore and his anti 
the hero, yeah. you know, which yeah, is yeah. hard to play, but he's really good at it. He's he's right in the sweet spot. Uh, and then we have a Bennett song, Holiday, which is a sequel to the Family, uh, which is the, I actually saw the fir- the first one. Okay, You're, it was great. You were great Thank in you. it. That's a sweet story and yeah, heartwarming, very heartwarming. Or tell where can people are all these on the platforms, right? Uh, yeah, or, yeah. So yeah, you can find them anywhere, whether you're on Amazon or Voodoo or whatever. Yeah, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. So yeah, they're 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 kind of kind of everywhere. And this this is sort of the uh, holiday version the sequel, sequel, but it's yeah. set at Christmas time. Yeah, and it's a, a because if it, you saw the film, we kind of wrapped all characters at the end. There's right. really nothing new to say. So it's a complete standalone film. So you don't have to see the first one. To if get, it, to, this could be like the, a new film. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, if you've seen it, it's kind of cool because you can see yeah. how things evolve. Uh, but it's but it's a standalone film completely. So on average, you're, are you shooting like one, two, three films? A, three features. And year. how how long are your shoots in general? Uh is it uh, well, 30? shooting days is probably between fifteen and twenty. Okay. Uh, so those those are act, active shooting days, um, and I don't like shooting. I do like shooting heavy shooting schedules. So our last film, Ash and Bone, which is a horror film, we shot over three weeks. Okay. So we shot five days on, two days off uh, for three weeks, and we were done. Uh, but I normally what I like to do is I like to shoot say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. And oh. then be off three days because you can reload your batteries. You right. can you can go recheck your locations and and and, 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 and uh kind of get your hands around it. Uh and, and there's no surprises because you're very prepared right. for everything that comes. And are you shooting all over the country or you shoot everything in Michigan? Right now we're shooting all in Michigan because I'll tell you, with the incentives leaving, it left a huge void of talent mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, and, and we have great actors that couldn't make the move to Atlanta or, right. or, or whatnot. So they're still in Michigan and they're dying for good work. Sure. So so we have that uh, uh pool to it's pull like a from base of talent. yeah and uh and i have incredible connections so for instance uh, we shoot virtually permit free in my hometown and and oh. i have anytime we take out a weapon we have police escorts standing by to make sure that we're safe and everybody else is safe wow. and they just love what we're doing in the town so not only do they not charge me anything but they love being a part of everything we do so i have prisons and police oh stations God. and officers and cars That's brilliant and, yeah and uh, fantastic towns to shoot it in are, are um, you working primarily with one distributor or do you do you work with i different have a few different ones uh uh, uh, right now, I got to say, Vision has been releasing, and uh, Sony Vision released uh, right. Betrayed. Uh, so I've, I've been very happy with them because they've done great international sales, which is a huge part huge. in uh, in uh, today's film world. So uh, very very happy with them. Uh, I have Green Apple distributing the two that are coming out uh, November first. So the I jury is still film out. Coming out. With, with the green, green apple, apple. yeah, yeah first I heard ever, really good things. I didn't know that at all. Yeah, so. they sell primarily Redbox, Netflix, Showtime, and uh, Family Video. Uh, so that's kind of their yeah. their sweet spot. Yeah, I hadn't heard of them either, but yeah. I've been hearing good things about them. Yeah, good guys uh, for sure. Joshua, are they, who are they in Florida? Who runs the or? place? They're in Florida. Yeah, is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 remembering now. I yeah. mean, I'm just an, an actor in the film, but yeah, yeah. No, for, uh, really good guys, and they, and they have a good presence around the world. They they take your film to all the film markets, Great. which is which is really awesome. So I I, I look for. Uh, a distributor that can take your film to where it needs to go. Right. So uh, we, we we have a couple of different homes, so to speak, for our films because I think I see somebody that's very good with a specific genre. Right. I'd like to get it right. into their hands because I know they can take it far. It's not because they're necessarily better than anybody right. else. Like, for instance, next year we have Agramon's Gate, my uh, my first real attempt at, at horror, I guess. Oh, wow. Uh, comes out in, in February, and they're going after... Uh, we just had a limited theatrical kickoff for Eternal Code, and we're going to uh, plan on doing that for uh, uh, Agramon's Gate as well. So, uh, now, are February. You, do, do you also take scripts that you don't write or do you also you write but do you also do other people's projects other scripts or 
uh, Bennett's song films are not written by me. They're okay. written by my partner, Nancy Oswine, uh, and, and those are her stories. That's her story. uh, and, and right now what I found is I'm a really I, – I come up with great concepts uh, uh, and, and I have good ideas, but, I, but my story writing is not – incredible mm-hmm. so lately i've been talking to uh, brett miller who's actually started working with me as an aide first ad who's amazing but he's like you have great ideas harley but i think i can tighten up your scripts wow. and and he was afraid that he was gonna offend me and i'm like right. really i'm like that's awesome i'm gonna send you some scripts can you take a look at them yeah and he's like oh you that's not what I expected, but okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. So I sent it to him, and then uh, he wrote Ash and Bone, which we just did, where the original concept when we sat down, I I, I remember say, saying because he said, "What? So what are we? What are we looking to do?" And I said, "If you take House of Wax and uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and they have a baby," <laughs> that's what I said. Wow. And he said. Okay. <laughs> so then we structured a story around that and he wrote it and, you know, rewrite five already. We were ready to produce. Wow. Uh, uh, it made me feel like I'm not at all as good of a screenwriter as I thought I was for a minute. But you know how rare that is that you don't have the the ego that will block you from saying, oh, wait, you just wanted you already knew that wasn't your strong point. And the universe or whatever, the person yeah. was already there. But I mean, the fact that you were open to actually saying, because so much in this I don't care whose name is, is on it. Let, let's make a great film. Let's tell an amazing story. Let's do the best we can. Yes. Yeah. Takes a village. Well, yeah, it does. Uh, amen. So when do you have time to do anything else? I you mean, know, you're, you and Katie, you have kids and the yeah. wife and... You love doing this. It's just amazing. I'm so inspired that you, because everyone thinks you have to live in California. You've got to live in LA or you've got to live in New York. Now they think you got to live in Atlanta. Yes. You know, but you're we'll showing have a lot that, of friends who move there. Yeah, which is great. And I'm from there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny. I left, I fled there, not fled in a bad way, but I left <laughs> yeah. 30 years ago because there was no Nothing. real acting to mm-hmm. do. And it's still so bizarre to me that that there's legitimate work. So when mm-hmm. I go back there, I'm, it's just bizarre. It would almost, it would probably be like if you suddenly, your hometown in Sweden became the next big film place and yeah. you'd be going back like, what happened? Wait, This really? wasn't here. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of how it is. And, and, and it, yeah, it, and that would be funny too because it, it was, when I was growing up, the people, they didn't like the Southern accent on TV. So, which is kind of true now too. Right, right. Uh, I see this on auditions all the time. No Southern accents. Right. So, it's true. Uh, yeah, it's very odd how that works. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it would be really weird if I came back to Malmo and, and, and that was were like, like a Hollywood of filmmaking. Too. It would still be weird because Very you're like, weird. wait, I left here to to pursue, pursue this. That. Yeah. yeah, but no, it's inspiring because I th- I applaud you for doing. You know, there, Thank everyone you. in this town in particular. You know, I always say, um, drive by any Starbucks and every there's a every you know there's a writer. I don't even think the laptops are turned on, but you know every <laughs> everyone's got their script. Everyone's yep. writing a script, but it's everyone talks about writing a script and they talk about making a movie. And they talk about producing a movie, but not that many actually do it. Joe always tells me that he's like, you don't like that whole aspect of the meetings and everything else. Oh. I'm like, I don't mind meetings as long as they're Pro- productive yes, and yes, they're going to lead somewhere. And, and I won't take purpose. those. I won't do those anymore <sighs> either. I mean, now I live in Palm Springs, so I have an excuse. Yeah. But I'm you fine. have a pretty like, nice festival actually in your hometown. You have a, we have a great Queen Palms Festival. Is, uh, really, really. Uh, it's come on strong the yeah. last few years, and uh, uh, we were betrayed was a finalist this year. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah it was screening, uh, screening there the, when they had this uh, last uh, big push, which was really cool. That's great. Well, no, it's it's true, but I I'm with you. I I, I say a me- meetings have to have a purpose because you can waste hours and weeks and you know <coughs> so much time with just talking about wanting to make a movie that never yeah. gets made. Well, I love the journey that we talked right. about earlier. So to actually make a film is a part of that journey. So I, I love the I love the grind. The yeah. part that a lot of people say, "Oh, man, this, the long hours." I love it. Yeah. That's my happy place. That's your happy place. Yeah, I I love uh, creating. Yeah. And I love sharing. Right. Um, you know, having the the, the premiere here was amazing to see, you know, a, a 
first of all, I'm not even from here, and right. we fill a theater. We fill this. They were trying to extend the red carpet to be long enough for the media. I mean, oh. these are. If you ever said that I was going to have the a problem of ha- of needing a, a second red carpet and put up posters, to fi- I would have laughed at you. Yeah. So to get to share that and 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 people appreciating your work is just it's humbling and it's amazing and it's, it's exhilarating. Well, what's authentic is the gr- the gratitude that you have. It's genuine and it's real, yeah. and that's what's important. And yeah. that's why I think it's too bad we're not on camera because people could see Harley's got this. Because you play some tough guys too. You yeah, play some powerful. Love, love playing, but that's what's villains. so great about you and Bennett's song. The other, it's because you get to play to this me. very sweet, mm-hmm. you know, guy who's probably like that's A closer to like, you, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the the trick with playing those characters is it's tricky to find out where you end and they begin mm. at times. With you know, playing Mikhail. Yeah. In in betrayed yeah. was not hard to know where I ended and he, and he begun. Right. It's so I, far. I, I, that's how oh, I feel about a lot of the stuff yeah, I do. Yeah, it's so far. It it's very easy to just turn yeah. it off. But yep. when it's closer, so it's harder in some ways. But your your real vulnerabilities or insecurities come out more yes. because it's closer to who you are. Yeah, and and it, it's tricky. Um, just to play somebody because you're you are vulnerable as that character you right. are because he you know cole is a goofball yeah and uh and he has really good intentions but he stumbles a lot right uh and but but his good heart right and uh, that was a lot of fun to play but uh it's a yeah great i cast. mean t- everybody worked Thank really you. well together everybody said don't work with uh kids and animals and i'm like <laughs> i'm gonna you thought, well, double just, down on that. I'll just make it all in one and we'll see if that's yeah. true or not. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody who hasn't seen it, we have 14 kids in yeah. that movie. Just our, uh, me and my love interest, uh, uh, Aphrodite, who's a great actress. She does oh, yeah. so she, what, good. Yeah, Breathtaking. She, I mean, now, is she mi- Michigan also? Yeah. We're, she's been all over, though. Yeah. But I mean, she's based. Were all the kids local yeah. hires? Yeah. Wow, we we went through a very rigorous process in hiring the kids right. because that was a tricky one. So we had, you know, audition, callback, audition, second callback, audition. Did you audition uh, the parents? Uh, no, because no, I mean, you know, oh, let's no, be honest, I when you work me, with I, kids, yeah, you have to uh, work with the parents. We I, we drew up. We we had a stage room, so to speak, where we staged the the the, the moms and some dads, uh, so that they didn't interfere. Right, because right. sometimes they want to be the acting coach or the manager, second manager. director. Yes, all those things. So, but, well, but they were intended, so good. You know, good though. intentions. Yeah. yeah, I think all all those uh, stage moms and and uh, and pageant moms and whatever they are, <laughs> uh, dance moms. It's uh, dance all of it. Moms. But but I think they all mean well. Oh, totally. I really do. I don't think anybody has bad intentions, especially for their kids. But isn't it great when you see um, you get to watch child actors because they're not, especially because they don't mm-hmm. act. Hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, because at that age, if they haven't, they're not too. Yeah. walled off yet you know mm-hmm. so the key is just to capture the 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 realness and yeah 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 and we we tried really hard to kind of become families mm-hmm. so we hung out and went and got ice cream and and, and met uh, so that we when we we actually did not refer to each other by our real names the entire production oh wow so uh, we all talked to each other as characters from the first table read so they got their taste of method Yes, method act, real yeah. method acting. Yeah, yeah. I think it was kind of fun to see, but but everybody loved it. It was the hardest film to wrap. Oh. Uh, I mean, we were all crying at the oh. wrap of that film, and and then they got to start giving you gifts and stuff. And I'm like, I'm supposed <laughs> to be a tough guy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Have you worked with any of the? All the kids are coming back for the sequel. Oh, all the same God, kids, right? All the same it's kids. Amazing. Isn't that crazy cool? And how long has it been? A year, two years. Three. Two years in between. So they have, yeah. Well, they do change a little, I guess, yeah. in two years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and well, that was a lot of fun too. Very, very different plot. Way more of a comedy, right? Uh, because the romance is already kind of set. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, that's. What I was just going to ask yeah. you: Do you want to do more comedy? Do you like doing comedy? I, I love comedy. Yeah. I have a comedy script, and my my uh, uh, distributors are all saying, "No, comedy doesn't travel." Uh, you know, what's funny here is not, 
you're oh, not you even, you're international. Not even, yeah, they're you, they're like in England. They don't even like the same stuff. They well, don't have. They, but we're all afraid of spiders all the way around the world. So do a spider movie, <laughs> right, or, right, or right. they're afraid of bats, or they're afraid, yeah, you yeah. know. So fears travel really well, and right. comedy doesn't. But but I don't. I hate to say this. I don't really make the films for them. Right. You that's know, a good point. It's it's something that's inside of me. So I I, I think I'm going to tackle this comedy good uh, I, think you, I think you'd be not real, yet i think you have a real comedic quality about you so you good. should you should do it i yeah. mean you see it in your with while you see it in the the character you play in the film mm-hmm. there i i was thinking you know i could see you do you, you have a um well there's different people you um, I, I think of in the comedy yeah world. i don't like to tell put a name on actors oh but, then you get it in your head <clears throat> yeah 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 but there's one in particular okay um well he created the office Oh, you remind me a little bit of him. I know you would never would have thought of that, but no. in terms of comedic wise, I could see you playing that sort of character. I, I I've always been fascinated by comedy in general. Mm-hmm. I, I watched the uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, uh, Seinfeld coffee. Oh, uh, coffee with car, uh, cars, cars, coffee co- with comics uh, and car, uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah I don't <laughs> love the show, and I'm like, I can so relate to their how they observe humanity right. and how crazy and hilarious things are. And I think a lot of the stuff that the comedians say on stage, <laughs> I just don't have the guts to grab just a microphone it. and say it and and then make it funny. Right, uh, right. Uh, which is really really cool. Well, but most I love really good comedy. comics are. Really smart. Oh yeah, p- thinkers who are just sort of like you know mm-hmm. commenting on what's happening in the world. Oh yeah, it's social yeah. commentary. And do you get Sirius XM radio? Do you have Sirius in your uh, car? I have it in my car. I don't ever listen to well, it though. But Netflix I, now has a channel. I think it's called Net- Netflix Tells a Joke, uh-huh. and all it is is they just take s- bits from stand-up specials on Netflix. So. Mm. A lot of famous comedians, but also unknowns. And it's like, so instead of listening to the news in the car or whatever, I've been listening to these comics. Mm -hmm. And it's not only hilarious, but it's like, I I feel smarter sometimes because some Mm -hmm. of the stuff is so smart and brilliant. Yeah. You know, and it's fun to laugh. Listen, we all need to laugh. Bill Burr, Joe Rogan, some of these cats, it's like... It's not only fun; it's way too true. <laughs> it's 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 Joe's uncomfortably true. Is, oh is yeah. Brilliant. yeah, 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 yeah. He's funny. I I've, I've had a chance to meet him a couple of times, but we never really got to hang out. But he's th- that he's a fun guy, man, and and he thinks outside of the box. Right. I don't even think he knows there's a box. Oh no! Or, uh, when they say he goes over, the, here's the line, and he yeah. just erased it. And, yeah kept kept going I and like it's this. not ill it's not in ill will either no. it's to just it's just to say stop thinking about all these things that don't actually exist right and you know joe's an example of a guy who was <clears throat> doing the mainstream sitcoms yeah. and the and then he's now found his own mm-hmm. brilliant niche that yeah. is his own and he calls his own shots and, and yeah he's he's so much more successful doing what he's doing now than he ever would have been yeah being a company guy at the studio or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I do. I do actually his job. I, I'm on UFC Fight Pass. I do uh, live fight commentary and I host a show called Warrior Wednesdays. Oh wow! And uh, uh, yeah, I, I always say he sh- he's got to come out to one of these things, and I want to reconnect with him. I met him one time at Extreme Couture in Vegas, and a couple of times for for fight events. And when UFC came to Michigan, they took us old dinosaurs out, and <laughs> uh, and we were like you know shaking hands at the events there. And, so you uh, do say you're still connected to? Yeah, that. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah. So so where can people listen to this on Wednesdays? Uh, it's on TV on UFC Fight Pass, uh, and uh, it's called Warrior Wednesdays. It's a live fight event that's done once a month. We have a ton of uh, of people watching this show. I think we had, I don't know how many millions, but like a huge show. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and we, I think we're spoiled. We have an incredible matchmaker who puts together these fights that are just like the old not old UFC but, but I mean but, like but original the, like not not old UFC not stylistic fights right. necessarily but he's just amazing at finding great matchups that produces fights that are compelling like the Liddell Couture fights and, right. and, uh, and and that style of fights that are just you just can't believe after every event we were like <laughs> 
uh, Mike, I don't know how you do this, but like another great fight. Are you amazed at the um, the fans? How how dedicated the fans are in this particular genre? I mean, and also, isn't it amazing how the the, the fights have just they the, gotten more popular? Oh. I mean, it's gotten to be a huge industry, and how they evolved. <clears throat> if you right. look just ten years ago, it was a wrestler versus a boxer, right. or a kickboxer against a jujitsu guy, right. and now everybody's well disciplined and well rounded. And sometimes it makes the fights a lot better. I think I still love the old days where it was a sport against the sport, right. a practitioner against the practitioner, because you get such fascinating fights that right. way. Uh, you, you know, I've trained with Hoist a fair amount, and, and Hoist Gracie was uh, one of them guys that you you know he weighed 175 pounds and just took out everybody. It was like, <laughs> what happened? It's like a Mack truck, yeah, coming at you, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he's thinking there aren't that many, I guess, Jean Claude. I'm thinking Jean Claude Van Damme. I'm trying to think of yeah. a- any p- athletes like that who made a transition to acting. Mm-hmm. Jean Claude, I guess, was yeah. one. Dolph, Dolph Lundgren. That's true. Uh, he was an amazing kickboxer in okay. Sweden. Uh, uh, actually, was I was in act- tr- acting class with him. Oh, here. okay. I was. It's been a few years ago. Yeah. 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 yeah he. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he kicks incredibly hard. I actually sparred one round with him, and it was probably the only time that I thought about quitting a round. <laughs> he obviously well, a he's big, also big boy, yeah. tall guy. Yeah, uh, he's not as beefy. No, as he's you'd lean, think. but lean. He's, yeah, he looks like a, a Swedish hockey player actually. Right, right, right which is kind of right. funny. Uh, but yeah, he kicks hard. I don't know if you ever get to do stunts with this guy. Wow. Bring bring an extra bring an extra pad. padding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he had ma- amazing power, and and he even took it easy on me because at the time I was fighting at one hundred and forty five or one hundred fifty five pounds. Wow. So uh, so he went easy on me, and I still I it shook me. I mean, we could do a whole hour interview just on on that on alone that part right? of your yeah. career. I mean, because that's a whole other yeah. thing. But I like I'm glad to see you stay connected. Yeah, and. There's such a fan base there that can now follow your acting career yeah. and your film career. Do you find that you get the crossover with people who know you from both? I think, if anything, this Eternal Code <laughs> film will see it because I I haven't really mixed the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and for the last show, uh, one of the owners, Norbert, who uh, is the owner of WXC, said, he's like, don't you have a film coming out? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes... Well, can't we put the graphics up on the screen and have you talk about it? Yeah. And I'm like, we can. Can we? Are you okay with that? Well, and he's like, oh yeah, I want, I want. Let's do that. That would so be I'm like, fantastic. Okay. To me, it's like a. And natural... you're like talking about like four or five million well, that's viewers. What I mean. So I'm like, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with it. Yeah, let's get on that. <laughs> yeah. So we did. So that... we'll see what happens here. We had a limited theatrical, like I said, for right. Eternal Code. Uh, Imagine theaters in Michigan uh, and, and and the Midwest. Uh, uh, wanted it a week before it releases so it actually already had uh, a week out wow. so when we premiered it here it was five days old and th- uh, and they they also got this they asked me can we do a sneak peek on thursday we've had a lot of people calling and i said sure and then i looked at the schedule and they had three show times on thursday i'm like hey guys that's not a <laughs> that is not a sneak peek have you but- been back home since it premiered there since it's in the I was there uh, it was really cool too because we didn't do an official premiere right I went to the first it, yeah. screening and uh, snuck into the theater essentially oh, bought my ticket like sat everybody else sat in the back and I was like let's see how they react did anyone recognize you? You later? know what my favorite thing is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, but my favorite thing is uh, when people don't go bathroom during your movie. Right. Because it's so good they that they leave. can't leave. They and, were in and, and I had three people out of probably 130 people who were in the theater. It was a 180-seat theater, and it was almost full. So 130 people, there was three people that went bathroom. And you, locked, hour, the, you locked the door like, before yes! <laughs> Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah, something I was very. That happy should be on that. a review. Only three people went to the bathroom. And ever since I had my first <laughs> premiere screening, for some reason, I had a guy in the audience who said, "I really appreciate the movie," and it was for the uh, 
uh, abstruse movie. It was an hour 57. Oh. And he said, if you're going to make a movie that long, you got to make sure you get a theater near the bathrooms <laughs> because he's like, I couldn't leave because it's such a nail biter. And, and I had to run to the bathroom just and I'm wet. back I've for the Q&A. i myself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's a good sign. Yeah. If, if four people pees, pees themselves, you know you're a Right. You did a good, oh my you God, did a good thing. Hilarious. Well, the time is gone, but oh, wow. I, I can't believe it. It flies by. But it's been such an honor and a pleasure to meet you, have you on the show. Thank Everyone, you. please go out and, and watch Eternal Code. Follow uh, Harley Whalen's film career. Go and check out his website for the company and mm-hmm. all the places on VOD and Redbox and streaming and Netflix and Hulu and yeah. that they can find all your stuff. And congrats on all the films coming out. We'd love to have you come back Thank you. to the show. And uh, I would love to. I, I sensed when I walked in just the ambiance and the feeling here. I'm like... I love the energy cool. here. This is going to be fun. And when you need another bad guy one day, listen, please. I do homeless really well, too. So okay. you, <laughs> I don't to know work. if they'd get away, if you can get away with being in that shape can, and being homeless. We can cover me up. That's what right. we do. I have a homeless face. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I had a casting director once say, uh, Jasper, you have the face for Deadwood and the body for Baywatch. I was like, <laughs> oh, could we get a show in the recent century? Anyway, oh, wow. enough about me. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great well, to thank meet you. you. Everyone, thanks for listening. Tune in. Uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Peace out. Bye. Thanks for checking out One on One with Jasper Cole. Check out past episodes and get the latest as they're released. Subscribe today on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube.